such places as Englehart, New Liskard, and Matheson, and those are just a few. And threading its way through the hard rock of the shield and the very foundation of development in the north was a ribbon of steel forged in the foundries to the south. Two successive episodes of sketches will be devoted to the story of the building of a people's railroad, its cause and its effect on a way of life on the James Bay frontier. So, come on aboard. We'll look first at the great play belt of the town of Cochrane, and then we'll head down north to the bay. The James Bay Coast, ancestral home of the Swampy Cree, site of the first English-speaking settlement in today's Ontario. Following an ancient Indian canoe route along the Moose River system, Ontario Northland Railway's year-round workhorse, the Polar Bear Express, is heading south. The mixed passenger and freight Little Bear crosses the Abitibi River nearing its destination. Joined by the daily excursion Big Bear in the summer months, the train's arrival affects this place like the tides that influence a seaside village. The railway is Cochrane's reason for being. For those who live here, the train is a metaphor for a lifestyle that contrasts change with tradition. Yeah. Susan um, Salmon is a part of it. Do you want to have train Monday? I have to have my half Friday. To us, it's like a big city. Scary. Rail yards, roundhouses, the playing fields where one learned the ropes. Such was the case for Claude DeLille. Well, I've been here since 1957 is when I started on. They had just phased out the steam. I started with diesel. By the way, I had third uh, generation DeLille on the O&R. Family, bonds common to people like Tim Bluzes. Well, I've been loading flat cars like this since my dad died. He was doing it for years before me. And others, like Harris Bernstein. If you go there in the morning, it should be all ready. Our business prospered and grew due entirely to the fact that the railroads were here and Cochrane was a distribution center. And if it hadn't been for that fact, we would, my father would never have settled here. The dawn of the 20th century, the unchartered north of Fairyland of Adventure, where towns were born overnight, an epilogue in the tale of two cities. Albert Tucker. The scene tends to shift to uh, Toronto and the ambition of Toronto's businessmen as they become conscious of themselves uh, to compete with Montreal. Montreal was the headquarters of the CPR and the Bank of Montreal. It was becoming a kind of railway and financial capital. And I think Toronto, uh, as it produced some of these wealthy businessmen, uh, wanted to compete on an even level and I think in some ways they drew in engineers who drew up these schemes to connect Toronto with James Bay James Bay through Hudson's Bay and that would be a port an access that Toronto would have removing it from any dependence on Montreal and the St. Lawrence to go out through Hudson's Bay and the Atlantic to Britain and Europe 1902 from North Bay a CPR town an army of workers began to drive the steel of the Temiskaming and Northern Ontario Railway through granite and over bottomless swamp toward the Arctic watershed. The venture, spanning three decades, showcased the true grit of the industrial age. 
the locomotives uh, particularly, you know, uh, it would be so fundamental. The flat cars, uh, the passenger cars, uh, even the private, you know, sometimes they had rather luxurious private railway cars, uh, were all built in Ontario. We really did have, uh, I think, a self-sustaining railway technology uh, well into the 20th century. Plunging northward, the scheme opened the region to colonization, while mineral finds sprinkled communities along the survey route. The goal of joining up with an east-west line also underway fueled aspirations of a newly elected premier, James Whitney. He came from southern Ontario. He did, however, realize that in a, a man named Cochrane, uh, <clears throat> he had uh, probably a very, very capable lieutenant in the north. And Cochrane uh, owned uh, a hardware store, and uh, it was a pretty substantial hardware business in North Bay. He was elected for the constituency of East Nipissing, and Whitney now realized he had a politician who really could help him with whatever uh, uh, project the new conservative government had for northern Ontario, the new Ontario they determined that one of the objects would be to extend the TNNO northward to junction with the National Transcontinental, and now they knew the name of the town. It would be Cochrane. Along the 49th parallel, 750 kilometers north of Toronto, population approximately 5,000, the legacy of social and economic ambition. Founded in 1908, the town remains as gatekeeper for rail cargo bound for the population in the north, who are ever dependent on the lifeline of steel. For many in Cochrane, being part of that distribution chain has meant friendship and rapport with a network of people throughout the James and Hudson Bay region. Yeah, we shipped you 18 pieces on the freight yesterday. Okay, James, I hope everything uh, goes well there. That was James uh, Rickard up here at the... Uh, he operates the Tidewater Goose Camp uh, about 50 miles east of Moosonee at Hanna Bay. And he gets upwards of uh, about 100 hunters come coming up, mainly Americans from the uh, Cleveland and uh, northern Ohio and northern Pennsylvania area that he caters to. My father was an immigrant from uh, Lithuania, and he started out as a uh, peddler, peddling to wherever he could around Montreal. And then when he heard about the railroad construction, he started visiting those construction camps. And as he saw opportunities, he started supplying goods to the railroad contractors and he started bringing in produce and fruits and vegetables. The railroad arrived in Cochrane, and uh, my father thought it would be a good place to settle, and that's why he settled down here. Cochrane uh, became the center for what was called the Y, where the TNNO trains could make the necessary turns to uh, come back south. Uh, where the National Transcontinental from uh, Winnipeg, of course, could come through. It was the only town in which you had not just a TNNO railway station, you also had the National Trans... So they combined the two into a Union station. Now, no other town on the line had a Union station. That was distinct for uh, Cochrane. In its shared function as a hotel, the building today is pivotal to commercial traffic. Throughout eight decades, it has come to symbolize progress for some, nostalgia for others. Growing up around the station has given artist Wentworth Falcons an atmosphere to draw on. In those days, the station was the most important place. It was the busiest place in town, of course. There were a lot of trains going in and out. And uh, it was probably the most uh, beautiful station on the line. The uh, station has its cupola, which was very, very distinctive, and a little weather vane that uh, had a locomotive on it. And uh, it is one of about three buildings in town, in Cochrane, that is uh, 
is unique to Cochran. The heyday of the Iron Horse, which gave employment to his father, gave Falcons a rainbow of unforgotten memories. I made a lot of trips with, with my father, and uh, he used to point out the, um, all the details. And I, I, as a kid, you know, you, you know, oh yeah, you know, you wouldn't pay attention. But I guess some of it seeped in, and I'm able to, uh, to use that material today to, to draw the details on the, on the locomotives and so on. So uh, I'd get to fire the engine sometimes, and maybe run it a few miles, you know, and that sort of thing. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I remember specifically um, coming back from Hearst in the middle of the night. And it ran all night from about one in the morning till till uh, five or six when I got into Cochrane, coming down through Capus Gazing, and we didn't stop. And uh, we were already really flying for a freight train. We must have been doing about 60, 65 miles an hour. Most people don't don't realize the. Uh, that on those engines the noise was was unbelievable, and, uh, and and the jolting and jumping around it just didn't it didn't ride like an automobile. The steel rail pervades life here, beyond buildings and machinery, it touches the cultural heart of this place. A district centre, the threads of English and French-speaking Canada are intricately woven into Cochrane's makeup. The influence of east-west intersecting a north-south axis. A diversity of people owe their story to the elected social order of the early days of construction. Many of those English settlers, uh, certainly farther south, really were not inclined to work on constructing the railway. Uh, their inclination was to operate the railway. They wanted to become the engineers, the conductors. The construction crews, however, are made up of a remarkable uh, variety of peoples from Europe. Romanians, Bulgars, Swedes, Russians, who in many ways were much more evident on the construction crews than were English. As it has influenced the social makeup, the railway as a way of life is a world unto its own. I used to come down with my dad here a lot of times in the, on a Friday night. He was a machinist. Well, then that's like a mechanic, eh, for the locomotives. Why? Well, used to fall asleep a lot of times uh, right, right in the engine there. You can bet your bottom dollar and you woke up, you were thirsty. It's warm in those uh, cabs. Well, our roundhouse was over at the east of the shops here, right where our power house is now, our boiler room. Generally, it's well, kind of dark in there and stuff. I mean, there not been uh, too many windows in it. Just the windows in it at the time were just uh, in front of where the locomotives uh, in the pits. Well, that was kind of a protection. If the steam engine ever did uh, roll ahead, it would just break the window instead of uh, breaking the wall down. Penetrating society in the James Bay frontier has left its impact. Susan Salmon, who came here from Port Albany several years ago, endeavors to soften the shock of transition for her extended Cree family. A lot of people come here, they don't speak English. It's hard for them. Plus, they don't know what agency to go to. So that's part of my job, is to help them out, find an apartment, what school to go to, and stuff like that. Like a lot of Native people can't afford phones, I guess, and in a way, so they kind of use the center to get messages through. So part of my job is to make sure these messages go through. Every year we have like a, it's called a feast. We call it a feast to us, and it's, uh, we serve wild food like rabbit, kind of goose and stuff, moose meat. And it's because a lot of them ask me to cook for them because they don't eat that kind of stuff at the nursing home. So I bring them here and I cook for them and that's like a treat to them.
It was a lot of adjusting to go to. When we lived in Forami, we didn't pay rent. Here you pay rent. Um, like we, we bought groceries here, you, you do buy groceries, but over there we charge, then we just pay at the end of the month, eh? There were some things I like, like it was different from, from uh, Fort Albany, like there's theater, you know, places to go, restaurants, it was different. The movement of goods and people, the sorting of loads for the next run north, the calendar of everyday life, the rhythm of Cochrane's economy. Well, it's a busy job. This is a unique business. Everything from cars, machinery, equipment, construction equipment, building materials, Zambonis for ice services. Well, there's no road to Moussini, so Naturally, it'd have to go by rail. It's barged up from Moosonee once it gets to Moosonee, or a winter road in the wintertime. Stuff goes all the way up the uh, James Bay coast, as far up as the east side of Quebec. Great Whale, I think it is, they're going now. On the border of the Hudson and James Bay lowlands, Cochrane lies in an area known as the Great Clay Belt. This outcropping of arable soil motivated an extensive government promotion around 1909 to lure immigration, offering land at 50 cents an acre with the chance to supplement incomes with work on the railway in winter, attracted a flow of arrivals. Farms were cleared. Blackmire, Clute, LaMarche, and Fournier townships were staked out and stripped of pulp and firewood. Ultimately, the reality of the short northern growing season would defy the hopes of many. Yet the anticipated metropolis of the north, laid out with streets a hundred feet wide, was on the move with fate in the waiting. People, as they built or cleared the land, uh, chopped down the trees, they had the stumps, uh, they used the, the, uh, the wood as they could, but they burned the brush. And uh, it was all right, you know, on a calm day. But you could never be sure when a wind wouldn't come up. Catastrophe. July 11th, 1911. Shifting winds fanned a hell's inferno as the great porcupine fire spread, snuffing the life of the rail town. Our teamster drove my mother and the children on our delivery wagon to the uh, railroad roundhouse where everyone boarded, uh, the whole town was there and they were boarding freight cars and uh, were taken out of the town and I believe down south to Englehart. And sometimes the construction crews uh, would take care of these people who were now left homeless uh, by enabling them to, uh, to share in their, uh, their food supplies until the government stepped in and, uh, and helped the people much further. Today we are cleaned out. Tomorrow we rise, read the Northland Post, as a town rebuilt on ashes. Incredibly, five years later, a second fire would once again bring Cochrane to its knees. And once again, the spirit of survival and the promise of a future were the bricks and mortar for renewal. Stories of endurance remain a part of the lore here, while silver threads also play in the bond of memories. Cochrane was a great place to grow up. I lived right across the road from the uh, beach, and so we were able to go swimming. My math teacher, Miss O'Toole, uh, who is very well known to uh, a lot of uh, Co Cochrane people that grew up there, um, convinced me that uh, I really should follow art. She was an artist herself, and she thought that I had uh, the talent to go on in that field, and uh, so I took her advice. Now this painting that uh, is, I think quite familiar in Cochrane now is um, of the uh, station as it was back before it was modernized. In doing the painting, I had to uh, include, uh, make it interesting by uh, including people that would ride the train and perhaps a couple of characters in Cochrane. I believe I, I have the, um, the principal of the high school, Mr. Marwick, 
and one of the students way back along the uh, side of the train you'll see a, a man standing there with a cig cigarette he's watching things going on well he had a good reason to he was his name was bud tickner and bud uh not only was the chrysler uh, representative in cochrane but he also was um, a fur dealer and he used to deal with many of the natives uh selling or buying and selling their fur then there's a man standing there looks like a cowboy well that i i use stomping tom connors as, as the model for this uh, person he sort of represents a number of people that um uh, traveled on that train, you know. I had int intended to put Miss O'Toole in, but uh, uh, I, I didn't have a good picture of Miss O'Toole, and she was someone that you, you had to represent as Miss O'Toole, or, or you'd hear about it. My wife and I have pretty well traveled the world, and uh, we would never think of living anywhere else except uh, Cochrane. There is much that holds the people to this place, a counterforce to the transient pull of the rail. As each car is prepared for its run, the many that are affected by its coming and going can't help but be reminded of the bigger world along the rail line that they are a part of. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. As for the rail line itself, its presence is forever woven into the fortunes and the fabric of life in the James Bay frontier. The railway has to be seen in terms of a social and cultural necessity, uh, perhaps more than in terms of an economic or financial success. It really opened up the communication from farms to towns, uh, from farms to schools for children. Uh, it did all kinds of things in a social and cultural way that would not have been possible without the railway. If the train is a metaphor for a lifestyle, then surely Cochrane, Ontario is a metaphor for the railway. Its lifestyle shaped by the daily touch of the iron horse. In a future episode, we will follow the rail to the end of the line, to the story of Moose and E and Moose Factory, Ontario. <laughs>